So I'm sorry you missed this morning, but we recorded all of this for you. Oh, Alex, great. Yeah. Because I know you have a lot of free time. So let me, so that, this is, uh, this website, this is on our, uh, this is on our lab site, aerolab.usu.edu. And then we've got a projects tab here, and this is the ONR YIP project. So when you go there, um, we have all this information. So as a video of all the flight test and stuff, um, here's some documents, the proposal, the annual reports, the final presentation agenda, we'll be putting up the final report here. Um, and uh, so this, this kind of goes through, you know, the project overview, the objective, here's some statistics, and then it lists out all the publications. And so this morning, we focused on all the analytic and computational the work that's been done on this, which there's been a great deal. Uh, there's been 11 students who worked on this, three PhD dissertations, three master's students theses, and most of those were actually focused on the analytic and computational analysis of this thing. And the flight testing has actually been a rather small portion of the larger project where we're studying uh, you know, using a single wing for yaw control, roll pitch and yaw. So, so this is the demonstrator, but um, but it's it's a rather small. So I'll just kind of scroll down this, but you can see these are these are the journal papers that uh, have been published on this, and then uh, we've had fifteen conference publications, and so we we went over a fair amount of this today, um, and uh, specifics about lift distribution and how do you use that lift distribution to control adverse yaw. Uh, and role, you know, the role yacht coupling. We've gone over our analysis methods, our numerical tools for doing this. And um, and then here's the theses and the dissertations that have come out of this. And we've also, we also did a study on swept wings about uh, what if you, if you use this traditional uh, sweep compared to what we call a crescent wing, where you have a linear change in sweep. Uh, you know, this is the red wing is what you see more in nature. The black wing is what mankind makes because it's easy to manufacture, right? So what are the aerodynamic benefits of the red wing or the black wing? So we, there's a whole uh, dissertation basically on that type of a study. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll have to read it. I don't want to guess. Okay. That's, that's, well, that was one of my all, questions just yeah. too about. And we have this all film, like all the presentations from okay. today, so I'll give you a link to that Great. and you can go back and watch. But. Um, but these are good questions and please keep them coming. I just, I'm just trying to show you what that. So, and then software packages. So we developed four, di four different packages that are available online. So Mockup-X is probably the most uh, notable one. And, and we took about 30 minutes from over that earlier today. Uh, these are the two aircraft that we designed as part of this project. The, the first one was Manta, that was a smaller four foot aircraft, fully 3D printed. And we just were really trying to test the 3D printed aircraft. So it has traditional ailerons or elevons. Um, and we flight tested that, and then Horizon is the one that we've been showing uh, for the last year. That's the one we've been focused on. We've got videos about the aircraft design, print, and assembly. It's fully 3D printed. Uh, we've got a time lapse of the assembly. And then these are the flight testing videos that Ben just went over. But I wanted to scroll down and get to the control mapping. This is, this is getting back to your question. So you're asking, how, how do we control yaw? So mode, we have four modes on the aircraft, and, and the pilot switches between those by these different toggles on here. And so we always take off in mode one. Uh, that's that's the one on the left hand side. And what this is, this graphic is simply what the trailing edge looks like on the entire wing from the back of the aircraft. So so when he does a roll command, uh, all of these are working in unison. That's a traditional elevon, right? So we've got five surfaces here, five surfaces there, one in the center, uh, and uh, and so there. It's just acting as an elevon, right? Um, in mode two, when he switches into mode two. The aircraft is trying to minimize drag and still give him roll and pitch control. So just like we have roll and pitch control here, we have roll and pitch control here, but it's trying to minimize drag. So it's actually deflecting each of these a little bit differently in order to produce something closer to the elliptic lift distribution or to minimize drag on that aircraft. Uh, so that's in mode two. Then when he switches into mode three, which we're actually going to skip today, so we flight test it, modes one and one two. We're going to jump to mode four today. Um, Basically, this gives him roll pitch and yaw control in mode four. So, so uh, on a on a traditional uh, controller here, so we've got the pitch up and down, roll right and left, and then over here, this is our throttle up and down, mm -hmm. and then this is the yaw. Uh, so he he today is going to be able to move this stick, and that will control yaw. 
And the way that it controls yacht, whenever this turns red, then it means that it's doing some yacht input. So it'll get here in just a second, right here. So you see how every other control surface, uh, they kind of go up, up and yeah. down, right? So that creates a whole bunch of drag on one side compared to the other. So it, it uh, creates a yacht bar. So uh, in the, that's the, the deflection up and down in the grid. It's uh, how far the surfaces are moving. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think these are in the degrees. Deflection the one is the horizontal length equal to the span of the surface? Or something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is how wide they are. So we have wider ones in the center, and then as they go out, they get smaller. But, yeah. I, I guess. Yeah. So that's what we'll be testing today. So he'll be able to actually try to wag its tail a little bit. Um, okay. And uh, we're gonna and, and play with the coordinated turn type of things. So uh, again, we only have like four laps that we get um, in a flight. So we have we've outlined very specifically what we're gonna do with each lap. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the point of the flight. Today. So is there um so if there's like a command coming in and it's in there the pilot's directly commanding surface deflections, right? Well, he's just putting roll pitch in yaw, and then we've got a board. Uh, in here, a microprocessor yeah. that takes in that signal, roll pitch and yawn, and it's got a, a mapping function on it. It says okay. if we're, at, uh, you know, if he wants roll and pitch yeah. together, this is what we're going to do. If he wants roll and yaw together, or you know, any combination yeah. of the three, it's got a, a mapping of what all eleven surfaces need to do in order. So it's like a virtual surface that he's commanding, and then yeah. that gets mapped out to the actual. Exactly. Um, but there, I guess, yeah. What's what I was going to have to. Right now, we don't have like a body axis rates that are being measured. You're commanding rates that are close. No, to we're not itself. necessarily commanding rates. Um, on board, we are measuring now. So we've got a pick stock on board. So we have the data afterwards. Okay. But he's just flying this as an RC aircraft. And that's why I say it's open loop. Yeah. Because it's not trying to close a loop on that trajectory or, okay. uh, or waypoints or anything like that. He's just trying to fly it and control it and then we're recording all that. So. And are they segmented or are they, there's like, do these have the morphing? So there's no discrete edges or right. So um, so we did a study on a continuous. In fact, can you hand that that black uh, one of the ones with the black in it? So we did we did a study on uh, on you know what if we had a continuous trailing edge on this whole thing, right? Yeah. But it turns out that that's not very good for yacht control because you're limited on the differential deflection you can get yeah. between each of these mm -hmm. surfaces. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you actually want the drag from, from you know, very disparate uh, deflections over here. You want yeah. the drag that that's creating. And so we went back to these um, oh, okay. discrete control surfaces. Yeah. Well, actually the, the wing that we flew, it has a continuous uh, the deflection, but the spin was too short yeah. to create that very significant right so yeah. that could be the reason so i would kind of rule out that yeah that's true that's true you can do it with continuous um but uh yeah zach did a whole bunch of uh, uh optimization study on this and we decided on the discrete because it was uh we could get more yacht authority basically okay so yeah but these are um conformal flaps so you can see here there's no hinge point necessarily so you've got a, a servo inside here that's pulling and pushing on that tongue. And so, um, you know, oh, so it's okay. a, so it's a conformal very... surface. So, All right. So there is no break here. Like right. We have a slip way. joint down here, okay. which James thinks is ugly, but <laughs> <laughs> that was the best we could come up with. <laughs> James, <laughs> James has a much more elegant design that he used at the Air Force, but this is what we can come up with here. So, yeah. And I, I guess. In the mode two, it looks like for elevons, you're, you're using all of the surfaces. Um, I guess I would just, if, if, aeroelastically, if you're using those most outboard surfaces for pitch control, uh -huh. then you, you, you end up with um, some zeros that are not too far outside either in the right hand plane or outside the unit circle. Yeah. So you don't need a lot of gain. If you if you start closing the loop on pitch, you could quickly drive that structural mode unstable. Okay. Um, 
doesn't mean you don't want to use them, but it just means you got to be a lot more careful yeah. if you start to close the loop on. Yeah, so we didn't do any elastic studies on this. We just fixed the elastic problems that we had. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so all of this analysis that you've seen up here is assuming a completely rigid body aircraft, which is not quite correct. Yeah. Um. So that was in a nutshell what we covered earlier today, but, but there's... Um, Anyway, there's quite a bit of analysis that, that went into this control law and stuff like that. So from the research perspective, it, it would be interesting to see if the arrow approach you used on this could be combined with a flexible a structural model uh -huh. to do an arrow elastic analysis. Yeah, I think I'm sure we could actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean every, every probably Boeing, Lockheed, and Academia. It's like, um, I don't know what the right, it's like barbecue sauce. Everybody has their favorite flavor of how to do air elastic analysis and everyone's is the best. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and there are differences, I think, uh, but uh, there's a lot of good opportunity for that here for future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, the elasticity is something we've completed. And actually, um, based on this work and the 3D printing stuff we've done, we've submitted an NSF grant with the University of Michigan to look yep. at flutters specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a controller that they want to uh, design or try out on a on a flutter and we have uh, the ability to create means the flutter. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, so we, we put in an NSF proposal for that. Okay. With Bernstein? With Bernstein, yeah. 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 Exactly. Good. Yeah. Uh -oh. So I want to uh, kind of switch gears here um, real quick. And, and Brian, you missed this earlier today, but real quick, this is an overview of the budget, how the money could spent. So that's half a million dollar grant. And um, so you can see uh, most of it went to student salaries. That's the big blue chunk. The orange part is the overhead here at the university. So I have uh, purple is factory salary. Benefits is yellow. Uh, blue is supplies and flight tests. So you can see how much effort we put in the flight test compared to the rest of the analysis that was on the project. Um, that's the, the, the blue there. And then travel is the green. And then the dark purple is tuition and fees. So anyway, I kind of give you a breakdown of our emphasis. Yeah. Can I say this is the absolute, by far, the best organization of what ONR got for the money it spent. I've never seen such a perfectly organized, like we got a website, all the publications, the students, the I mean, just fantastic. Great. Um, Great. I've never seen such a, in fact, I'm, I'm thinking to send this to our division director and say, this should be the example of what we would like to see out of every. Um, okay, so I want to jump back to um, a couple of things that I mentioned earlier. So the, the whole purpose of this is to get rid of tails on, on aircraft, right? So how are we going to get rid of the vertical tail? Yeah. Clamshell. Can you the clamshell? Um, and so, you know, we wanted to study that for if we could do lift distribution across the way and control that lift distribution, how effective is that? Are you okay if I take the aircraft? Yeah, yeah. So, so um, we, our methodology include a bunch of analytics stuff, a bunch of numerical stuff, model assessment, and then free body dynamics and the flight testing. So anyway, we covered all these four major categories today throughout the process. Um, ben is going to take this out to the flight field or get it loaded and get ready to go. Um, so we're going to be leaving here in about 45 minutes. And um, uh, and we're going to switch gears and show you one other thing now that we actually started working on with James. We're going to take about 45 minutes and go over. It's, it's solving the same problem of tailless aircraft. Here, I'll let you guys take the airframe, and then I'll keep talking. I always think if you have wing lifts, put the shells on the wing lifts. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, there you go. You got a nice big arm there. The wing should be stiff in planes. Um, yeah, and and truthfully, we want to get rid of the winglets, right? Right. Um, but if we you don't want to have, but we have a, <laughs> might as well use them. Yeah. So you'll get a chance out on the field to be uh, to look that airplane out over a little bit. 